The reason why I'm here is because um, after we set up Rewide State, we ran a massive hack day called National Hack the Government Day. Tom Watson was the minister I was working with at the time. I asked his permission to run this big hack day and um, scrape government data. It was before anything was open. And we ran it. It was very successful. And a few months later, they started data.gov.uk. But what was missing was the young people. And I thought, if we're really fighting to open government data and to have um, this amazing resource opened up to us that should be ours anyway and should be open, and work out what we're going to do and, and how we're going to solve problems, what those problems are that we're going to solve, et cetera, et cetera, then we need to make sure that young people know that this data is there as well and just kind of, you know, maybe we've just shaped it in a really boring way. So um, I spoke to Google and asked them if we could um, run a weekend there. Um, and same thing, open government data was after data.gov.uk had, had started. So we had legitimate data we could use. And I had 50 places, flung the doors open, and expected to be ticking off people and kind of saying, sorry, you can't come, we're full. And I had three people apply. And I was like, right, I'm obviously going out into the wrong places. I've just gone out through networks into the usual developer networks and places where I thought progr young programmers would be. And so I thought, okay, I'll try schools. So I phoned up schools and they went, oh, no, we don't teach programming. It's too difficult. They can't do it. And uh, so I was like, right, um, what are we going to do? We've only got three. And uh, I then... I, I worked really hard with my networks, but it was, very, it was very obvious very quickly that there were very few young people out there, and the people that were out there had taught themselves how to program. So I thought, okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the open government data problem and the fact that these kids are not being taught how to code. Both of these are of equal importance to my mind. We eventually got these 50 kids together, put them together, had the most amazing weekend, and it started a, th a, a kind of regular event when we're now going into our fifth year. And we've gone from 50 kids to 600 kids. It's still not awesome, but it's, it's getting better. And some of them are in the audience, which I'm thrilled about. Thank you for letting them come. <laughs> and, um, and so that's kind of, you know, that, that's my raison d'etre. And I've been lobbying um, government quite, quite strongly, along with lots of other people, to get this into the curriculum. We're kind of getting there. But I'm not going through the school route. I'm still going through find local civic problems or work with open government data and build your skills around that using peer-to-peer -peer learning. So um, the film that you are going to see now is just five minutes from um, Young Rewide State 2012, which was a week, we extended it to a week, where um, the kids all worked during the course of the week in various centres across the UK, and then they all came together and did a massive show and tell in Birmingham, and there were winners, and it was all terribly exciting. So, um, watch this. the largest independent developer network in the UK. So on Monday morning, the kids come together for a week during their school holidays, and they come into the centres. The centres are set up in different cities, and they're led by independent developers or alumni from Young Rewired State from previous years to help them build a mobile app or a web app in one week that must include at least one piece of open data. I love YRS because I love YRS because I love YRS because I love YRS because I love YRS because, love YRS because it's helped me loads to find people who have the same interests in me and show me cool stuff I can do with coding. And I got to meet loads of different people who like the same things as I did. Coming together to create one thing that you all love and you're all passionate about. The centres and the mentors are really helpful so you learn a lot more than you do when you're at home just coding by yourself. Yeah. Yes. Next year, I'm hoping to definitely. Yeah. Definitely coming back next year. Well, we think it's really good that we're able to make apps that we ourselves would really enjoy because some of the apps on the market there 
they're good, but they're not amazing. Yeah. Our friends tell us things like, oh, wouldn't it be great to have an app like this? And then we go away and we think, oh, could this actually be possible? Could we do it? Yeah. We made this thing called Bookify. It's like a book recommendations thing, but it also, one of the really cool things is it integrates Amazon reviews and it also links in with your local library. Some of the apps are just so polished that they could be out there right now. There were so many great things to look at, actually, that uh, we, we couldn't remember which was the greatest at the end, so we were all looking at our notes, but I think we figured it out. You'll probably meet some really cool people and end up making something really proud of and enjoying the process. I think it's a great opportunity for people. I think they should definitely get involved. You come, you make new friends, you yeah. do the coding, you learn a lot. That's all that's important, really. It, it turns coding into more of a social thing than a solitary thing. Whether you're seven or you're 70, you can make stuff. It's whether or not you have the resources and the opportunities, and I think that's what Young Rewired State does. It gives people that opportunity. These kids are only taught to code from self-interest, and through the process by being mentored and getting together, they make those really fundamental relationships that make a fundamental difference to their future, and could, from what they build, make a difference to all of ours. I think it's important for them to be involved because it really allows them to show themselves to the world, to the government, to schools, to the education system. It really allows them to show what they are capable of and show that age is no limit. They can be like at the forefront and really lead the world into new great amazing things. So there's another guy who's crazy on jQuery and he's 12 as well. So he's written all the drop down navigation, he did it in a day. So these kids are just super talented and this experience is great for them because the team that we built over this week is like a real team now and after this event completes I'm sure we'll continue to be in, in communication about where this goes. I love Young Red State because it is so completely inspiring for me as an adult. The way that they started, the way that they worked together, the way that they dealt with all the problems. You know, they, I've, I've worked with teams of, of really experienced adults um, that just weren't anywhere near as good. We created a web app which um, you use on smartphones. It alerts you when you're near a dangerous um, road, but only if you're using the phone. We have these things in the navigation section, which is called high and low levels. We tested the app out here, and it said that there were low level of pizza restaurants, high low level of pizza crime, actually. high, uh, high level of pizza restaurants, low level of rubbish, low level of rubbish, rubbish water, crime. I think it gives them that chance to, you know, to show what they're good at, but then also have to take others' views into consideration. And I think that's a really good skill for life. I think the most inspiring thing that I've seen is how giving kids or anyone, for that matter, the uh, the space the opportunity to create things, what that generates. Just getting people in the same room, giving them the resources they need. I mean, the whole movement of getting kids to code is just fantastic. It's something that seems to have started, restarted again in the UK, and hopefully we're shipping it across to other parts of the world, but it's great to have it here and be part of that re-emergence of that movement. Yeah, seeing all these, all these incredible ideas and solutions and like, like, this is like ultimately why you need to be involved as a sponsor. It makes me really happy to help these kids and like bringing these ideas and solutions out um, to a broad audience and to a lot of people who really have to see this. Oh my God. <laughs> I love them. Um, that's why I think programming is important because it's just the joy that you see in these, these children's eyes and just, you know, what they're building, what they're doing. I'm not quite sure why this is happening again, but never mind. Um, so there's a couple of things I want to um, leave you with. Um, firstly, I don't know if you noticed, but there's quite a few girls in there. Um, it's, ta it's taken a while to do this, and um, I've used several um, magic bullets, Lily Cole being the magic bullet this year. Sorry, Conrad. <laughs> um, but... Uh, the big thing that I think about girls and programming, and we need female programmers out there, we definitely do, is that if you leave it until they go into senior school, it's too late. They have too much to cope with. They have to find some way of fitting in. It's all a bit too grim, and the boys don't face this problem. And so if we leave it until year eight, that is too late. They won't pick it up then. It's just too, they're, they're kind of stepping into a kind of geek circle that is just not cool enough for them yet. So I really lobby for, for the girls to start programming when they're about seven or eight because their maths at that level is just strong enough for them to start programming. And this is where I think the um, 
programming lessons and maths really can combine because programming can make maths relevant um, and at the same time kind of maths brings programming to life. So it, it's actually kind of a magic bullet for both of them. And I think this, this isn't just about education. This is about decisions that these kids will make when they're older. And this is about control that they will have over their lives. And it's just something I think is much, much bigger than just can you learn how to do maths and, and will you learn programming by the time you leave school. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>